meeting behind, but that's okay because we'll just start the meeting late if we run over. So um, we're all going to go around the room and ask, or the panel, because not everybody's in here, to ask two questions each, and um, we'll just go with that. Um, okay. So the first question is, tell us about yourself and some of your community activities. Hi, my name is Dwayne Taddy. I uh, lived here in Cottage Grove since 2002 inside the city limits. Um, bought a beautiful house, old house on the corner of Maine and R. Um, I'm 44 years old, uh, married to my high school sweetheart, uh, Berdella, who drives school bus here in town. Um, have two children. One is uh, 19, almost 20 in the United States Navy in Guam. And another is my daughter, 15 years old, who uh, goes to school here in town. Um, let's see. Well, I, a lot of community involvement since I've uh, been here in town. Most recently, I uh, assisted with the Cottage Grove Carousel, Friends of the Carousel, with their Facebook page, their first website, and also rebuilding the main infrastructure of the carousel and seeing it move from the WE Fair over to the winery where it sits now. Uh, prior to that, I have uh, volunteered with the graffiti rapid removal team under Marie Longfellow. I have also uh, participated in multiple food drives with community sharing and South Lane School District and South Lane Fire Department, bringing in over a thousand pounds of food for three consecutive years in a row. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, about it, unless you have any more specific questions. If you had to choose between closing the library or laying off two police officers, what would you do? <clears throat> That's a question that's been asked before, and no matter which way you answer that question, um, you're not going to make everybody happy. Um, that's a tough one. I think make it partisan. The conservatives like to would rather keep the cops, and and liberals would rather keep the library. I can't answer that question um, at this point. Uh, you'd have to look at funding, and I think those two resources in this community are very important resources and I personally to answer that question would consider moving money from another source to keep both of those uh, funded. Mr. Roberts. Thank you Mr. Moe. Mr. Taddy, you've given us some of your background and your application and in this discussion. What do you feel are the strengths that you can bring to this council? Well just general interest in in the community, um, I naturally have a desire to find all the information on things that interest me. Um, that'd be my greatest strength is getting all of the information before I form a decision. I have a lot of experience with computers and uh, researching people and things. so. And it, it just interests me in general. Okay. Uh, my second question. What's more important for our city right now? Building new homes and commercial space or rehabbing, expanding, and better utilizing our existing homes and storefronts? My opinion. And I have no knowledge of what it costs to build new building versus rehabbing old buildings. Um, that's a tough one to question, to answer, Counselor, because it's two, two different things. Um, I think we need to focus on building new, affordable homes uh, for moderately incomed folks, low to moderate income, and I mean, both of them are important. We've got to rehab what we've got because if we don't rehab what we've got, then it's just going to get distressed and we're going to lose it. We're going to lose the historic homes, the historic downtown businesses, but at the same time, we have to invest in the business park and, and build new. So I can't really tell you which one's more important. They're, they're both, I can't say they're both equally important, but they're, they both are important depending on who you speak with, speak to. Thank you. Mr. Irvin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome, Mr. Taddy. Hello, Counselor. 
To your knowledge, what do the residents of Ward 1 believe to be Cottage Grove's greatest asset? And what aspects of the city do they believe detract from its livability? <clears throat> Mount David would be one of the uh, things that Ward 1 residents care about uh, the most, I think, especially on the north side of Ward 1. On the south side of Ward 1, uh, southwest side would be R Street Expressway, as we call it. Um, uh, uh, very few people knew when they bought their homes there and more are finding out that the long-term plan for that road is to actually be an artery to run traffic outside of uh, historic downtown and so that's important to them especially the speed of cars the schools on that road um, and then I think the Mount David issue for the for the folks on the south side I'm sorry on the north side and how do you maintain contact with the residents of Ward 1? At this, at this time, I don't. Um, I do have a few friends that live in that area, and, and I stay in contact with them via telephone, text, and Facebook. Uh, I like the Facebook idea. I have a lot of experience with Facebook. Um, I know there are better ways to do it on Facebook than are being done now. Um, I'm... I have access to email. I, I would assume that I would do phone calls, uh, email and Facebook. And, and the thing with the phone calls is I do have a lot of free time when I'm away from home for work, sitting in a hotel and my phone is always on and being a, uh, a Teamster union leader, uh, I, I field calls all the time. So that, those would be the three ways. I think email, phone calls, let's make it four, uh, emails, phone calls, text and uh, Facebook. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Soulsby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Dwayne. Hello, Councillor. Do you think our downtown is healthy and successful? Yes or no? And the second part of that is what suggestions would you make to help increase its vitality? I'm going to sound, it's going to sound bad, but the answer is no to your first question. Successful and healthy. No, and I think I, I, I uh, many would would agree with me. Um, what do we do? Um, <clears throat> well, you know, I've I've looked through that downtown refinement plan, and I I coined it. I remember coming into a city council meeting and coining it the 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 downtown redefinement plan, and I'll tell you that I think people come here. I think we can attract people off of I-5 by keeping it the way it is. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I can answer that question. Uh, we have to go down to the local business owners, the local building owners, and find out what they need. Uh, what can they? How much can they afford to rent these spaces out for? How how does this? How do they go out and work with the Chamber of Commerce to try to sell the? sell the space so that people come here um it's beautiful in the springtime and in the fall to, to walk that area but i know that doesn't bring money into the businesses we need people to actually go into the businesses and we do the halloween deal people come down for the candy but how do we get them into the businesses so so yeah no it's it's not healthy and it's not successful and that was even I, i'll be honest pre-covid my answer would be the same pre-covid um maybe with COVID happening maybe we can have a major reset and try to find out how how does bend oregon get all those people to, to to come out there and 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 spend all their money and their time out there we're right off i-5 it should be real simple but i i don't know i i'm i tell you what i am willing to uh to to sit down with those people even though they're not in ward one and try to work towards a solution thank you have you have you ran for city council position for any city in the past and if yes where and what drives you to apply again if no why not and why are you applying now so the answer is no and forgive me for bringing my notes up because it's kind of kind of hits me kind of hard i'll tell you I'll, I'll answer that for you the answer is is no uh, I, I did move to Cottage Grove in, 
in 2002. I'm 44 years old, so I've been here since uh, I was in my 20s, and I didn't, you know, obviously I, I wasn't here that long in my 20s. So, um, and I had other things going on. I had a family. So, um, I will tell you that now, counselor, my family supports me doing this. In the past, they hadn't. I was raising a son who ha uh, had ADHD or was diagnosed with ADHD. Um, wife was staying at home, so I felt like I needed to spend time there. Um, spent a lot of time in the garden. But I'll tell you that my son's in the Navy now, so there's the father and son things that fathers and sons do it aren't happening now, other than a phone call here and there when we can talk. My daughter, uh, you know, my daughter is uh, real interested in politics now. She asks questions like, why is it done this way? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Uh, my wife, uh, she actually listens and, and, and participates in conversation. Um, my, my dad, um, and this is why I opened my notes here to focus on something. My, my mother died, uh, she passed away in July of last year and uh, she was a fighter. She told me not to give up on what I believe in. And uh, my dad comes over for dinner every, uh, every night and, uh, and we watch city council meetings together. The, uh, everyone this year we've watched together. He retired last year and uh, they all said, go do it. So that's why I'm doing it now. Uh, I know every single one of you know that I've had an interest in this city and I always dig deep to, to come up with questions. And so that's, that's why I'm doing it now. And that's why I haven't done it in the past. Thanks for asking the question. Mr. Fleck. Dwayne, welcome. Welcome. My first nice, question. Nice haircut, counselor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice and tight, huh? Yeah, that's right. So my, my uh, first question, have you read the budget, the charter, the development code? Yeah, I was actually just looking at the development code today, talking to a, a resident up on now, David, trying to figure out how that two and a half story house is uh, being built up there next to that single story on its on, on the right side of it and the two story on the left. So, yeah, I've, I've read the development code. It talks about every foot you go higher, you got to have a extra foot of, of, uh, of a distance. And there's some variances there. But anyways, yeah. So as far as the budget, yeah, I served on the budget committee for uh, three consecutive years. I was appointed in 20 uh 17 18 and then i sat on the budget committee as a vice chair 2018 19 and i sat on the budget committee as the chair for uh 19 20. so yeah i've read the budget i've i've actually dove into the budgets even more after i got off the budget committee uh it's a three-year term and uh yeah and then the charter i've looked at the charter uh i've also dove into deep into the city's website looked at the franchise agreements between the city and the utilities. I've looked at the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, nuisance codes, 8.12 chapter and all that. Yeah, I, I know, I, and stuff that I haven't read, I know where to find it. Thank you. You're welcome. So my next question is kind of a two-parter. What would you consider the most important issues that pose a challenge to the city currently and over the next 10 years and then what suggestions would you have for how the city could meet or overcome these challenges? Oh gosh, I think I answered a question similar to that on the application. Uh, I thought it was roads. I thought it was roads up until uh, about two weeks ago. Then I learned that uh, it's actually the sewer system. Uh, when I heard about a uh, FCS group, a consultant recommending a 12% increase for three consecutive years in a row, or else we, with the statement added that as early as fiscal year 2022, that we won't have enough money to uh, fulf uh, fulfill our debt obligations. I, I, I really realized that it was the wastewater. And then of course, listening to the former counselor, Jake Boone from Ward, Ward 1 that, that this position would fill, he was talking about uh, the different diseases that are associated with your sewer backing up and spilling on the ground. So that's serious, but roads, roads are, are a big deal. Uh, I would say number two, uh, and then crime, um, crime, and then you can put homeless in with that. I hear a lot of people associating crime with homelessness, even though I don't quite necessarily agree that, that, that that's true. But uh, so crime, homelessness, and uh, and then there's all the other ones that talk about fire department and and education. I mean, there's and those don't those are not city things. That's South Lane School District and South Lane Fire. But yeah, I, I would say that would be the order. Sewer, 
roads, um, crime, and how do you deal with it? Um, we got to find the money to pay for it. We got to look at uh, are the residents paying their fair share? FCS group says the residents are paying more than their fair share. Businesses are not paying enough. Uh, like I said earlier, we can look at moving money around. Are we spending money on things that we that we don't necessarily need, as opposed to things that that the city that that we do need, like our infrastructure, roads, sewer, policing. Uh, so that would be the answer. Is is we just need to we need to find the money. I, I heard you all you folks talking last week about selling ideas to people, and I, I that kind of turned me off. When I hear that my government is trying to sell me something, I don't want to buy it. If you got to come to my house to sell me books, I probably don't need them. And when the counselors are trying to sell me uh, a gas tax or trying to sell me something, uh, I, I'm thinking I don't want to do it. So it's got to be other ways. Uh, put the horse before the cart kind of thing. I'm willing to sit down and talk with you guys about it. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Stennett. Yes, hi, Dwayne. Hello, Council. Um, first question, uh, what roles do you think city government should fill in Cottage Grove? That was a question that I that I uh, spent some time uh, writing some answers to today. I figured that would come up. Um, I'm not good with big words. I'm just a, a working man. But um, I would say uh, the role the city government should play is is that they're responsible for um, the services and the infrastructure that we already have in place first, and then of course anything that that needs to be built to grow our city. And I'm I'm for natural growth, and I understand that natural growth means you have to expand things. Um, yeah, delivery delivery and 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 uh, maintenance of its current infrastructure. That's the most important. Thank you. Um, how do we get more citizens of Cottage Grove involved in their government to ensure it meets their needs and expectations? That right up there on the screen is the first. Uh, it's my understanding that this go to meeting stuff cost us about $180 a year. We've already invested in the cameras. I, I'm not sure if we rent them or lease them or own them. I hope to find out. Um, we've got the, we've got the, the cameras and the microphones and and the means to do it so we keep doing this uh, again facebook um youtube i know the city of cresswell hosts their uh council meetings live on youtube and then they're available to watch later um, biggest one is transparency um not surprising them with things like this sewer system thing um uh, and not <clears throat> It's not surprising them with with 12% increases. I know you can't see my face because I have a mask on, but that that really bothers people when they they hear some numbers like that. Um, and then of course you know, uh, mayor does a good job with with the uh, with the online uh, city hall day. I forget what that was called that you did where you came down and sat in here for a couple hours. <laughs> no, it was a it was in January I think or February. It was uh, city hall day. And, and just getting people involved, uh, pe people, I'm sorry, that's not the word I was looking for, get people interested in coming down here, get people interested on in going online to see what we're all about. But really this, this right here is number one, is making it easily accessible. Okay, do you have any questions for us? Nope, I don't have any questions. All right, well, thank you for applying. Right. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. Right back on track. Mm -mm. We're behind still. Um, Jennifer Crosby is here. Okay. So, is, can Richard control her to put her? Because we're gonna have her screen up, correct? She's online, and 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 you can talk to her. It doesn't look like she has a screen. There she is. Oh. She's up. Yeah. There. So, since they're cleaning, we'll go ahead and get started. So, um, thank you for applying and. Uh, we're going to go around the panel and ask you questions. So uh, tell us about yourself and some of your community activities. I'm Jennifer Crosby. Um, I am co-president of Pay It Forward Cottage Grove alongside my mother. 
Um, I also uh, run the community Facebook page, um, What's Going On in Cottage Grove, and talk to community members daily. Um, I was born and raised here, my been here my entire life. Um, I have two sweet little kids, and we live over on South M Street. Okay, so next question I have is, if you had to choose between closing the library or laying